coast, city to city, and town to town. Thousands upon thousands of talented amateur cooks lined up. I'm an insurance salesman. I'm an at-home mom. To take part in the most intense culinary competition on earth. As the smash hit from across the world comes to America. If I got on this show, it would be a fulfillment of a lifelong dream for me. I'm so excited. They'll compete to win a quarter million dollars. Sear their name in culinary history with a very own cookbook. I'm ready to bring it. Let's do it! And become the first American ever to go from amateur cook to master chef. At every step of the competition, they'll be judged by three of the toughest figures from the culinary world. I'm Graham Elliott from Chicago. At 27, I became America's youngest four-star chef. Believe me, I know a thing or two about cooking and eating. My name is Joe Bastianich. I own 20 of America's best restaurants and three award-winning Italian wineries. I don't care if your roommate tells you you're a good cook, your kids, we're going to tell you how it really is. And of course, that's me, Gordon Ramsay. I've been in the restaurant business for 20 years and have 28 restaurants worldwide. Now, I'm looking for the one person good enough to become America's first master chef. This is such an honor that you're eating my food right now. I can't even tell you. Let's go. They'll compete under extraordinary pressure. 20 minutes left, folks. Cook like your life depends on it. So are you joking around? Because no, if you're taking it serious, you would have seasoned the food. No, I'm taking it very serious. All while facing challenges designed to stretch their creativity. Your future will be determined on how well you cook just one stunning egg. Test their palates. Identify ingredients inside that pot. Cumin. Your guess is cumin. And prove they can cook the meal of a lifetime. I know how important this day is. I don't want to give them one dish to complain about. It's a wedding, guys. You can't just say, I don't know where the salmon is. Come on. They'll learn how tough it is to feed an army. You've still got food in the oven. Oh, oh my God. Oh, by the way, it's cooked perfectly. And as the competition heats up, <laughs> most of them will go down in flames. Boring, boring, boring. Take off your apron. We're out of the competition. Cook like you're cooking for the Emperor. And after weeks of sweating, slicing, dicing, come on, glorious victories. That dish gives me hope. It's inspiring. And epic failures. It's a bad dish. You know it, I know it. Only one of them will become America's first yeah. Master Chef. Tonight, from the tens of thousands of hopefuls, only a select few were invited to Los Angeles to compete. Oh, I'm going to be cooking for Gordon Ramsay in Los Angeles. They come from every possible background. I'm a software engineer. I'm a mother of three children. I'm an attorney. I'm a construction worker. I'm a physician. They will present a single dish. Vietnamese chicken and rice. Catfish Arcadia. It's our loaded baked potato called funeral potatoes. For one chance to prove they have the skill. That's out of control. That's the best thing I've had today. And the passion to make the final cut. Because of the hundred people in this room, only 30 will earn one of these, a Master Chef apron. As thousands of amateur cooks compete to become America's first Master Chef. It's day one of the Master Chef competition. We've traveled across the country in search of America's greatest amateur cook. In this room are the people that made a big impression with their flair, passion, and potential. But just 30 of them will win an apron and stay in the competition. I'm going to be America's first master chef because I believe in myself. People say there's people who cook to live, and there's others who live to cook. And uh, I live to cook. Yes. I want to say to the other people in the competition to bring it because I am for real, and it is on like Donkey Kong, you know? I am definitely here to compete. Welcome to MasterChef, I'm Gordon Ramsay. I'm Joe Bastianich. And I'm Graham Elliott. This is a unique opportunity for one of you you're going to be crowned the first ever American Master Chef. Yeah. Cook the dish of your life. Show us why you're here. We've been doing this a lifetime. I've opened up some of the greatest Italian restaurants in this country. You have a unique opportunity to make the transition from home cook to Master Chef. If you 
absolutely commit and let that passion show, you guys will make it. The main goal today is to win one of these, the Master Chef apron. Getting this means that you're going to be moving forward. And the way that you do that is to make a dish that is delicious and amazing in one hour. Becoming America's first ever Master Chef comes with a unique prize. First of all, a quarter million dollars. <laughs> He busts out and he says, yeah, it's a quarter million dollars. We're like, holy moly, that's a lot of money. Secondly, publish your very own cookbook. <laughs> You've come a long way to get here, but this is where the rubber meets the road. I don't care if your roommate tells you you're a good cook, your kids, your moms, we're going to tell you how it really is. Think of the best dish you've ever tasted in your entire lives. I'll guarantee you, I've tasted better. Make this count. As amateur chefs, there can only be one master chef. Good luck. If I was master chef, all I can say is, wow, being able to get up every single day and know when you go to work that you're going to love doing whatever it is you're doing that day. That's, that's what life's all about. Our amateur cooks have just one hour in the prep kitchen to cook the dish of a lifetime. Woo. Hot up here. They'll be judged on taste and presentation. Our first contestant, Chris, is in high spirits thanks to his signature ingredient, beer. I'm cooking for beer cheese soup for you. Yes, I said beer cheese soup. It's going to be so good. Ooh. Cheese and beer pair so well together that it's just, it's a gimme. Will it be the secret to success? Or will he be the first to have his dreams smashed? Afternoon, chef. How are you? Hi. First name is? Chris. Chris, from where? I'm um, originally from Houston, Texas. What are you cooking for us? I brought beer cheese soup. Beer cheese soup. I put a lot of beer in my food. I love to cook with beer. I uh, saute uh, shallots, green onions, garlic, and celery, flour and butter. Then beer. Then beer, add some cream, and then add the grated cheese, let it just melt right in, and boom. What's your fascination with beer? Everything sounds like it's doused in beer. Love, well, I love craft beer. I really do. There are some really amazing chefs that are cooking with beer. I mean, cooking with wine, everybody knows people do that. It's common. Everybody does it. Cooking with beer, it's like, uh, I don't know. It sounds kind of funny. I don't know about that. It might work. Let's taste it. We'll see what it is. But I mean, I am not opposed to using a good beer to make a good soup. It's got a really nice consistency, actually. This is what it's supposed to look like? Yes, sir. It's kind of brown. It's very brown. Thank you. Ay, 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 ay. You know, I think there's definitely things that you can improve on that, but I would have no problem sitting down and eating a bowl of that. It's a bad dish. You know it, I know it. All right, Jeff, what do you think? What do I think? That has to be the most disgusting soup I've ever tasted in my entire life. Definitely no. Sorry. I'm, I'm guilty pleasure. Say it. But yes. No. Thank you. Leave that beer here. Are you crazy? You'll be dead if you eat a bowl of that. Uh, Dude, you wouldn't be dead. You can't eat a bowl of that. Come on. Crazy. With two no votes, Chris is officially out of the competition. But there are many more hoping to get hold of a MasterChef apron. Love of food came from where? Uh, boyfriends. I've always dated chefs. I have a thing for chefs. Wow. She's a chef groupie. There's nothing wrong with that, Gordon. I have a yucca and sweet potato encrusted snapper. My advice to you, continue dating chefs because you're never going to be one. No. I am making black and catfish over a bed of yellow rice. It's good. Is that dish worthy of that apron there? For me? No, it's not. So far, nobody has done enough to win an apron. 
Our next contestant, Suzette, a former professional soccer player, is hoping to score the first apron any way she can. We're doing tilapia fish tacos with a mango salsa. I really like to eat healthy. I played soccer professionally for Brazil. Excuse me. You played <laughs> soccer for Brazil? I heard you played soccer too at one point. Figured we could chat about it or play afterwards. <laughs> Gordon, I'm ready. I was a forward. If you were a back, I'll take you on. Oh. oh. Can you tell me how to improve on it, please? <coughs> the show's not that long. I really want to learn. I'm really here to work hard, and I'm motivated. I don't think there's a lot of discussion here, guys. <sighs> One strong piece of advice. Your enthusiasm for flirting put into your cooking. It'll be a thousand times better. Joe, yes or no? No. Graham, yes or no? No. Sorry, definitely not. Okay. Thank you for coming. So... Bye now. Oh, my God. I thought I was going to be sick. This is ridiculous. I mean, everything's just mediocre, bland, and no one's seen anything. Yeah. Boring, boring, boring. We, need to, we need to raise the action. Big time. Crazy. Coming up. So far, this has been a disappointment. And later. Some people call me cocky. I prefer overconfident. Overconfident. Are you setting yourself up for a fall, or are you just a bloody good chef? <laughs> you going to bring it? I'm going to bring it. From the thousands who auditioned, only the top home cooks were invited here to battle for the title of Master Chef. I'm done. We need to raise the action. Big time. But so far, not a single person has been given a Master Chef apron and a place in the next stage of the competition. Right. Sit down, please. Unfortunately, this is not good news. So far, this has been a disappointment, and I'm getting somewhat upset. You walk through those doors, then blow us away. I want to see you perfect that dish. Got it? Yes, sir. Can Mike, a server from California, be the first to win an apron and make his brothers proud? What I'm going to do is cook a pan seared duck breast with a little orange miso sauce. I'm excited to be here for Michael. He's put everything on the line for this, and to me, I admire it. First name? Uh, Michael. How old are you, Michael? I'm 34 years old. What are you going to cook for us? Uh, I'm cooking a uh, pan-seared duck breast. Uh, it's called duck sam. Graham Anier? Uh, Graham Anier, yes, sir. You're, you're flambéing the pan? I love it. Beautiful. And I'm burning off the alcohol. I'm going to add a little bit of fresh uh, tangerine or tangelo. He moves with such speed. Actually, I'm preparing a little bit of this. is a very classic Korean-style samjang. It's basically a soybean paste. He moves like a chef. Fine. Put it up. Put it up. Put it up. <sighs> this is such an honor that you're eating my food right now. I can't even tell you. The textures are mind-blowing. They're absolutely phenomenal. The balance is unique. You move like a chef, and clearly, you cook like a chef. Wow. Well done. Thank you so much. Oh, mm. my. That is like sex in your mouth, in the best possible way. The acidity, the brightness, the, the spice, the miso actually really works. The food is phenomenal. I'm gonna do this the way it should be done, all right? Beautiful bounce. Unbelievable. Right, Joe. Yes or no? This guy's the man, 100%, yes. 100%. <laughs> yeah, Graham. For sure. Best thing we've had today. Absolutely brilliant. Well done. Oh! Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Get that on there. Thank yeah. you. Give me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Come with me. Yeah! Yeah! This 
is exactly what we're looking for. I hope you watched him cook, because that has been the best dish so far. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you, Chef. Unbelievable. <laughs> this is the most amazing thing that's happened to me. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Ever since I left home and ever since I was a kid, it's just the culmination of all these life experiences. It's like falling down to this one moment, and it's it's a blessing, man. It's just, it's amazing. Dude! Someone's slapping me. <laughs> Mike's success breathes new life into the kitchen. Hi. I am cooking a Southwest seafood salad with a chipotle lime dressing. I think there's something in you that, that needs to come out. I think that, uh, that this apron's going to help you do it. Yes or no? Yes. Congratulations. Tell me why I should vote yes. I'm going to work really hard for this. Joe, you can't drink a 62-year-old lady's wine yeah, and not give her an apron. I'm going to say yes. Woo! I'm cooking uh, New Orleans-style barbecue shrimp. If you want this, you have to commit. I really want this. Louder. I really want this! <laughs> After a run of success, the pressure was now on Tracy, a doctor from Atlanta, who hopes her mother's recipes can help her start a new chapter in her own life. My name is Tracy Naylor. I have a four-year-old son. Hey, bud! What'd you get? Huh? My mom is the biggest inspiration for my cooking. She's the person who taught me when I was very young to have an appreciation for food. About a year before she died, I asked my mother to write down the family recipes. That cookbook for me is probably one of my most cherished items. My mother and I are very much alike. Don't have any formal training, just know how to cook. My puppy right there <laughs> came all the way from Buffalo, New York to see me do this. One taste. couldn't be more proud. I could not be more proud. Hello. Good afternoon. Hi. Good to see you. You as well. And Good first name you. is? Tracy. Right. And what do you do? Uh, I am a physician. Where did the love of food come from? Well, my mom um, is the person who um, taught me everything, really, that I know about food. Actually, in about four days, it's going to be the um, anniversary of her, uh, of her death. Sorry. Excuse me. Sorry to hear. Please, Excuse take me. your time. Um, she died about three years ago, very suddenly. And uh, we were very close. And actually, um, I brought with me today, um, just for inspiration, her um, cookbook. Little did I know that um, that would be, you know, sort of the, the last remnants of our family recipes. After she died, what happened was I just started cooking because I just wanted to taste her food. And I just started just to cook and cook and try to create those tastes and those flavors, you know? What do you think your mom would say to you now, presenting this dish in front of the three of us? <laughs> she would be beaming. She would be busting at the seams. She loved to talk about her daughter, the doctor, and I think she would be equally proud to talk about her daughter, the master chef. Okay, y'all eat up. All right. Thank you. I guess the, the question for me, can you take it to the next level? Can you cook outside of the cookbook? I, I'm a learner by nature, so I'm just here to say, teach me. Aprons are earned, yeah, with more than just a home-cooked dish. So we have to feel that passion and that hunger and that determination and that, that will to succeed. Joe. Yes or no? The search for America's first master chef continues as Tracy, a doctor from Atlanta, waits to see if her mother's culinary influence helps her make the cut. Aprons are earned, yeah, with more than just a home cooked dish. Joe, yes or no? I think that the, uh, the food is delicious. I think that a path in the culinary world for someone like you would benefit a lot of people. So I would give you a big yes. 
I have to give an emphatic yes. Thank you. Your the one reason why MasterChef yeah, was launched. Searching for individuals like you across America that are so passionate. Amateur chefs that can cook really good. What I want to see now is the journey. Absolutely. Because you have every potential to be the first ever master chef. Thank you. And right now your mother's looking down with the utmost excitement. <laughs> You've done her cookbook justice. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Here we are. Brilliant. Up. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> They loved it, you know, they loved it. I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> Having this Master Chef mom's spirit alive. <laughs> My mother would be proud. They better watch out for me. I'm ready to bring it. <laughs> Master Chef traveled the country in search of Americans who are passionate about cooking. Unfortunately, some signature dishes did not make the grade. This is a shooting picadilla with a sofrito slaw. It's very, very pedestrian. Definitely no. I could taste desperation in that dish. It is a wined tarragon chicken. Chicken's way overcooked. It's like rubber. Okay. I don't think you've earned it this time. What are you cooking? Wheat cracker encrusted ahi tuna. Considered a derivation of the norm. I can't think of a worse way of cooking a stunning piece of ahi tuna. Definitely no. What a shame. Our next contestant, David Miller from Boston, has no problems talking the talk. Today I'm making my signature dish, New England style bouillabaisse. Bouillabaisse is traditionally from Provence in France. But his personality is definitely an acquired taste. Blam! <laughs> yes! As I hit myself in the face with a towel. <laughs> I know you want some. I'm confident as hell. Are you kidding? You want to try it? It's right there. <laughs> Please do. Here goes. Here goes. The question is, can the judges stomach David and his dish? Gentlemen, how are you? Could be a lot worse. Thank you. Could be a lot worse. That could sounds positive. Now, worse. first name could is? Could be a lot worse. Dave. Dave, from where? I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, sir. Boston, Massachusetts. Are you acting or are you trying to be normal? I'm like this all the time. Wow. All the time. What do you do for a living? I'm a software engineer. A what? A software engineer. Software engineer. Sir, yes. What are you making for us? Today I have a New England style bouillabaisse. It takes two days to make a perfect bouillabaisse. Ah. Uh, You're sir. doing this in one hour? One hour, sir. Love the confidence. Some people call me cocky. I prefer overconfidence. Overconfident. Are you setting yourself up for a fall or are you just a bloody good chef? <laughs> we'll find out, won't we? Wow. So can you can you give us a preview? What do you got? Well, uh, again, I'm heating up the bouillie base right now. I have a crouton. Uh, and I'm working on my rouille. <laughs> Wait, vous êtes français? Je parle petit peu. D'accord. Donc, on fait quoi maintenant alors? Pardon. Du ciment, s'il vous plaît. Is this you normally? <laughs> this is really, honestly, or, 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 this is... This or is this is a Christmas really, pantomime? Am I missing the boat? <laughs> Where's my olive oil? I should have olive oil. <laughs> is there olive oil, please? Hey, have we just been punked? <laughs> Here's the good news. It smells good. Yeah. One fundamental mistake with this dish. That is definitely not a bully base. Let's get that right. Thanks. <clears throat> Let me ask you one critical question. Why did you come on Master Chef? I put my heart and soul into food. I'm stuck behind a desk all day, and I'm good at it, but I don't love it. I love this. So my problem is, when you're good at something, it creates a confidence. 
When you're insecure about something, it creates an arrogance. A great bouillabaisse takes two days to make, minimum. And that is not a bouillabaisse. Arrogant chefs are like blondes in Hollywood. And I'm being serious now. So pull back the smoke screen. What, what is the real you? Get the bravado yeah, in the oven. What's you on a plate? What is it? This isn't it. Thank you. Give me another chance. Finally. Graham. I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but, but I'll say yes. Me? Is it the talent or is it the, the joker? I'm a no. It's the joker. What do you think, Joe? Yes or no? I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but, but I'll say yes. Me? I'm a no. What do you think, Joe? I'm gonna bring it, I promise you. Really? I really. Because if not, I have him to deal with. <laughs> really? You're gonna bring it? I'm gonna bring it. You got it, man. <laughs> Do me a favor. Come here. Even when you think you're not putting anything on for these guys, they see right through what little facade you have. <laughs> I take every opportunity to learn from these guys. So it's a dream come true, really. Bartender Lee, Rancher Josh, and homemaker Christina all earned an apron and are now one step closer to a quarter of a million dollars and the title of America's first ever Master Chef. Our next hopeful is a very big believer in her southern style of cooking. Mm. Slap your mama. Hello, my name is Avis. I'm from Vassery, Louisiana. Sometimes imitated, but never duplicated. Which one we want to do today? I'm presently volunteering with those that are homebound, elderly, sick, and shut in. My cooking style is the Cajun cuisine, the New Orleans style. Once we put it all together, oh my God, make your tongue slap your brain out. Gordon Ramsay is the in-your-face crazy chef. Either you love him or you hate him. You can't but do anything but have respect for him. I love him already. <laughs> I'm looking forward to trading this in for one of what you have out there for me. I'm excited about it. I'm serving for you today uh, Catfish Arcadia. And it is um, over angel hair pasta. Season it with all types of seasoning. Cut it up, make your tongue slap your brain out. I kid you not. <laughs> I love to cook. And I love it most when people enjoy my cooking. I pray that this is pleasing to your palates. One of the main ingredients of being a master chef is being able to be selfless and giving and, and passionate and having faith. And I think you scream all that. Of course, things also have to be delicious. I think that the pasta is a little heavy. I think that there's definitely room for improvement on that. Okay. But I'm very excited with, uh, with what I've seen here. I hope it tastes better than it looks. I'm concerned about the presentation. How do we get you putting things on a plate with a little bit more finesse? Pasta, way overcooked. Catfish, cooked perfectly. 
But the, the crispiness on the, on the catfish, you know, I think it's, it's, the catfish itself is moist, the crust on the outside, the exterior is really delicious. And the pasta is the weak link. It's a big weak link. My vote's yes. Okay, Joe, yes or no? Definitely no, sorry. Please, come over. First of all, Do me a favor. Put that on. Congratulations. Well done. Oh, oh my god. I felt like you just crushed me. Coming up. Mac and cheese. Doing something so simple. It has to be perfect. Does the presentation on this improve, or...? What do you mean? Exactly what I said. He's a walking disaster. For our contestants, MasterChef is the chance to fulfill a lifelong food dream. Randy's down-home dish is filled with heart-stopping ingredients. It'll taste like the best loaded baked potato you've ever had. Farmer Randy can't much of a good thing. Oh, and I forgot one thing else. Nothing goes better than butter. My name's Randy Twyford. Aren't you a bit old to be wearing dungarees? No. No, this is normal. This is normal. Right. Great. So, okay. Um, explain to us what this this, this is. It's our loaded baked potato. This came from my mother. My mother used to make, uh, it was called funeral potatoes. <laughs> Holy hell. When somebody in the neighborhood, in the, around the farm area, would pass away, you'd take a dish over there to them. It's got cheddar cheese, it's got mayonnaise, it's got sour cream, and you put it all together. Bake it. And, and bake it. Funeral wakes. Funeral wakes. <laughs> <Caring. laughs> funeral catering. <laughs> and then I present it to you on our pig plate. Gentlemen. Okay. Is it normally that running? No. Wow. Does the presentation on this improve or what do you mean? Exactly what I said. It is what it is. <sighs> it's dated. Okay. As a as a nation, we've moved forward a hundred years. It's definitely caveman food. Joe. Uh, resounding no. I'm sorry. Graham. Absolutely not. So sorry. Oh, oh my God. Uh, he's, he's out he, to hurt people with that He's a walking f***ing disaster. A culinary heart attack. <laughs> I, I weep for the future. I'm and crying on the inside. He's from a farm, right? So it looks like cow dung topped with cheese. There we go. With almost half our aprons gone, the mood in the prep kitchen is tense. But not for everyone. Let's get some dancing up here. None of y'all dance. Y'all like y'all like clubs and dancing and all that. For Farouk, MasterChef is a chance to finally pursue a dream he put on the back burner for the sake of his young family. I mean, I ain't even playing with it no more. Just go ahead and do what you do, baby. And then I got this bacon here. It's going to mix in with some crumb topping. He has put things aside. You do with your family. You wanted to go to school for it, and we just couldn't. Just when you have a family, and this is what he wants to do. This is his dream. Daddy made your MasterChef. Macamori heats. My passion for cooking definitely comes from family. It brings people together, it brings family together. You want some too? Uh-huh. Yes. Chef, gentlemen, how we doing? Bro, thank you. How are you? Yeah, how are All you? All right, doing real good. Great voice. Uh, first name is? First name is Farouk. Farouk, good yes. to see you. Now, what are you cooking? I am cooking a uh, chic macaroni and cheese. I call it chic because I jazz it up a little bit, made it a little more classy, a little more sexy. What I'm doing right now is I'm going to be actually making some uh, Parmesan crisp. I'm going to be making them in the shape of butterflies. What? 
But this is Master Chef. <laughs> yes. Parmesan butterfly. It probably needs about one more minute. That's the last thing I, I think I ever would have expected to hear from you. You come in with this voice that's like shaking the room, and it's like, I'm gonna make you some Parmesan butterflies. <laughs> we just take and we put this on the side here and let it do it so it'll, it'll like fold up. You totally baked this, huh? Gratin style? Yes, yes. Straight baked it. It's actually holding together very, very well. All right, let's taste it. A confident grin, Farouk. Yes, sir. Nice browning. Beautiful. Even. All the way across. That yes. shows attention to detail, shows technique. You're going to get a nice crunch breaking through that top. And then you have that nice, let's hope, perfectly cooked al dente pasta underneath. Thank you. OK. Here's the issue I have with this dish before I even start tasting it. It has to be perfect, doing something so simple. Mac and cheese, one of the most commonly known dishes anywhere in the States. So if you're going to do it, make sure it's the best. cheese, one of the most commonly known dishes anywhere in the States. So if you're going to do it, make sure it's the best. Taste that. What does it need? Um, seasoning. What a shame. An amazing potential, great crust, and you forgot the most important thing, seasoning. So are you joking around or are you taking it serious? Because no, if you're taking it serious, you would have seasoned the food. No, I'm taking it very serious. Who are you with today? I'm with my wife and my son. Get them in here. Yes. Yes, chef. Jennifer, Silas, I need you, baby. Hi. Chef, Good to see you. My family. Silas, Jennifer. Jennifer, nice to see you. Silas, dude. Silas, what's up? Hey, How cool are you? Is he the chef at home? Yes. And what does it mean to him to be here today? Everything. He's made a lot of sacrifices to be a husband, to be a father, to be there for us. And I've been doing things for me, and he's put his own dreams aside. And you have the balls to do a mac and cheese. The topping's delicious, fantastic. I was, I was, I was. And then you forget the most important thing standing in front of you. Just a little bit goes a long way, small amounts. As you taste your food, you look at salt as a magnifying glass. You apply it to something, and it makes it taste that much more like that ingredient. OK, time to vote. I want to like this as a mac and cheese, and I think that you, maybe to your own detriment, have put this in, at least for me, in the category of a baked pasta. And as a baked pasta, you're going to have to say no. While the dish was missing, the seasoning, the salt and pepper. There was one key ingredient that I did taste in it that came through, love. And I think sometimes more than seasoning, people forget to put that into their cooking. I'm gonna give you a yes. I'm at that T-junction, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. You don't need butterflies, you don't need bushes of parsley. Can I just have a quick word with you? Yeah. Please, come over. OK. Do me a favor. You pick that salt mill up. And dude, 
Give that to your dad, please. Take the salt mill. Use it. A small amount goes a long way. Well done. Yes, yes. thank you, chef. Congratulations. <laughs> Take the salt mill. Take the whip. All right. Well done. Thank you very much. Bye, John. <laughs> I was so overcome. Just them accepting me and giving me that opportunity to grow and get better is what I was overcome with. I really think that, you know, he's going to learn from that. I yeah. think that that was something that he's going to take with him forever. Chef Farouk, to me, seems like a fairy tale. Once Upon a Time starts right now. With over half our aprons gone, the heat is on for those contestants still left to face our MasterChef judges. As the search for America's greatest amateur cook continues. Next on MasterChef, the final auditions as more amateur cooks from across the country battle it out. You've got two hours to get home and cook something authentic. Get out of here. Let's go. We got two hours. Obstacles will be overcome. I was born with a very rare birth defect where I only have three fingers on each hand. It's difficult because you got three fingers. How do you manage? For me, I have cooking. Hopes dashed. Maybe I made the wrong call. If you got any balls, you would go out there and give her an apron. <laughs> she does not deserve to go home. And for some, dreams will become a reality. I've been waiting for this all my life. Come here. I will vouch for him. Joe, I will make this guy better as the search continues for America's first ever MasterChef.